Hey everybody, this is a tutorial on how to split your audio tracks in OBS so that things like your game audio, Discord, and your own voice, and the voice of players in-game are all on separate tracks when you import it into software like Adobe Premiere Pro. During this tutorial, we'll be routing all of your audio outputs to a virtual audio input, and then routing all of the output of that virtual input into a physical output. I know it may be a little confusing at first, but if you follow along with what I do, you should be just fine. If you want to better understand why this is so important to do, you can read more about it in the description of this video. For this process, we're going to need a few key pieces of software to get started. All links will be available in the description. We're going to need a virtual audio device called VC Cable, an audio mixer called Voice Meter Banana, and for this tutorial we're going to be using OBS Studio version 29.0.2. Both VB Cable and Voice Meter Banana are made by VB Audio and found on the same website. A quick warning, before we continue, please watch this chapter through to the end or on another device other than the computer that you're going to do this on because you're most likely going to lose audio during this process. VB Cable is a virtual audio device working as a virtual audio cable. All audio coming from the cable input is forwarded to the cable output. You can just think of this as an invisible speaker that we can't hear just yet. To get started, click on Link 1 Virtual Audio Cable in the description, then download and install the VB Cable driver for your respective operating system. There's currently only links for Windows and Mac OS. The file downloads as a zip, so you'll need to right click it and extract all. Once extracted, search inside the folder for an application file named VB Cable Setup x64. Right click it and hit Run as Administrator. Click on Install Driver, then hit Install again. If you run into any problems that this video cannot explain, try restarting your computer after finishing installing all the audio cables, then follow these steps again. Once installation is finished, you can verify that it worked by pressing your Windows key, typing in Control Panel, click on that, and select Sound Options. Then look in the Playback tab for a device with a gray icon called Cable Input. If you see this, then the audio cable was successfully installed. If you lost audio after finishing the installation, it's likely that your computer automatically changed your default audio output device to a new virtual speaker you just installed. If this happens, press your Windows key and type in Sound Settings and select the first option. Then set your audio output to your preferred device. The default speaker built into your laptop may just say Speaker or Realtek Audio. If this happened, then your default input device has probably also changed to the cable output. If you're planning on leaving audio from Discord on the same track as audio from players in your games, then you can move on to the other chapter about Voice Meter Banana. If you want to split Discord into its own separate track, keep on watching through the rest of this chapter. To split Discord into its own track, you're going to need the additional virtual cables by VB Audio called VB Cables A and B. To get these, it will require a donation of about $5 to get both the cables together. You have to get them both, as they're not sold separately. You can find them a little lower on the page that you found on link 1. You only need to install cable A for splitting Discord's audio. The installation process is the exact same as the initial cable in the previous step. After we split Discord out, you'll be left with an additional virtual audio cable, cable B, to do with what you'd like. You can either use the same steps from this video to split audio from another application if you desire, or you can just ignore it and leave it until you need it in the future. Once again, before you continue, please watch this chapter through to the end or on another device other than the computer you're doing this on because you're most likely going to lose audio during this process if you haven't already lost it by now. Voice Meter Banana is an audio mixer application used as a virtual input-output to mix and manage audio sources to or from any audio devices or applications. Its purpose here is to direct the audio traffic out of the virtual cables we just installed out to the physical speakers or headphones you want it to play from. Basically, we're telling the application we want it to send audio to the virtual audio cable input and telling Voice Meter Banana to listen to the virtual audio cable output and play what it hears to the specified playback devices such as your speakers or your headphones. To download Voice Meter Banana, click on link to Voice Meter Banana in the description. It's important that you install Voice Meter Banana and not just Voice Meter, as the standard version of Voice Meter will only let you control one physical and one virtual input. We want Banana because it's the advanced version, which will allow up to three physical and two virtual inputs. We'll get to that soon. 
Once you click the link, scroll down and find the first orange download button that should be titled Voice Meter 2.0 Zip Package under the Voice Meter Banana Audio Mixer section. Right click the zip folder and extract it. Once extracted, open the folder and double click the Voice Meter Pro Setup application. Run that and leave all settings default while clicking Next until it's finished installing to your computer. At the end of the installation, start Voice Meter Banana. It's recommended to restart your computer once you're finished installing both audio cables and Voice Meter Banana to ensure everything works properly. It should be fine if you don't, but if you run into any problems or an error you just can't explain, try a quick restart and pick back up where you left off on this video. Now that Voice Meter Banana is installed, at this point you may have lost audio or will very soon during the process, so if that happens, please refer to the steps in the Lost Audio chapter from the table of contents below. I'm going to explain briefly what all these scary things on your screen mean and why you should have them set to the same thing that I do to get it to work properly. So now we're looking at the Voice Meter Banana Digital Audio Interface, or DAC. On the DAC, you'll notice five large vertical volume bars and five smaller ones to the right. These control the volume inputs that we're going to set up shortly. Notice each one of them has A1, A2, A3, B1, B2 next to it. A refers to the hardware outputs which you can select at the top right. We're going to click on A1 and we're going to set it to whatever device we want sound to come out of first. So if you want it to play out of one or more devices, you can select the second device here on A2. You're going to see multiple options of the same type, but just select the first one that says WDM unless you know what you're doing. Once you have A1 set to the WDM option for your default speakers or headphones, we can move on to the next part. Each one of these inputs we can assign a separate device, physical or virtual. Select A1, 2, or 3 for which output devices that the input you're hovering should be playing out of. For example, notice the way mine are set up. I have my microphone on hardware input 1, and I don't want to hear myself at all, so I have none of the A buttons selected. On the other hand, I have A1 and A2 selected for the second input track because I want all the rest of my audio to play out of both my headphones A1 and my speakers on A2. As for the B buttons, I'm just going to have you select B2 for the first input option and then B1 for all the other ones. Before we get into assigning the inputs, I want to make sure we cover a few important settings for Voice Meter Banana. Click on the menu at the top right. Click Auto Restart Engine, All Devices, that should be checked on now. This will automatically turn voice meter back on if it crashes due to any unexpected events. If you ever can't hear your audio, go back to voice meter and make sure that it's still running and that your audio devices are still set properly, where it said A1 and A2 and all that. Then click menu again and enable system tray and run on Windows startup. This way, every time you turn on your computer, voice meter will also automatically turn itself on. And if you click the X button, it won't quit the application. It'll only minimize it to the system tray at the bottom right. You can then click that little up arrow down there and find the voice meter icon again to get back to it if you need. Next we can move on to the inputs. I recommend naming all of your inputs as we go so you can stay organized for the future. For the first input we're going to name it microphone. Right click on the name and rename it. Type in microphone. Click select input device and choose the microphone device you want to record with. This step allows us to manage the microphone in the same place as the volume for the other inputs before having to change anything in OBS or during editing. For the second part, we're going to name it Discord and assign the device to Cable Output VB Audio Cable. And for the third, we're going to name it VOIP for Voice of In-Game Players. This is going to be the people in your games or your party chat. And if you want this to play on the same track as Discord and didn't get the additional cables A and B, then set it to the same device as Discord, Cable Output VC Audio Cable. If you decide you do want to split it and downloaded the additional cables, you can set the device of this input to Cable Output VB Audio Cable A. If you didn't install an additional cable A or B correctly, it will not appear in your device selection here. If you did install it and it still won't show up, ensure that your device is still enabled in the Sound Device Manager on your computer. For your virtual inputs, you can right click above the VAIO and change the name of the left side to Desktop and then right click above the aux and change the name to comms or communications. Once you're finished with this step, we can move on to the computer settings and we should have sound restored almost fully functional again. If you followed my exact steps up till now, we should have no problems with the following parts. The hardest part is already over, but we're now going to hit the Windows key and type in sound settings. Select the first option that comes up, 
and we're going to want to change the output device to voice meter input VB audio voice meter VAIO. This now means that our default playback device is voice meter. Voice meter will then play out the input devices that we specified earlier to the appropriate device that we assigned them to. Next, you're going to change your input device to voice meter aux output VB audio voice meter aux VAIO. Very similar to the other one, but just a bit different. This one is VAIO with aux, the other one has no aux. At this point, you should have sound restored. If you got this far and still can't hear out of your computer, double check that your microphone is on B2 like I have it and everything else is on B1. Uh, if you still don't have sound, refer to the troubleshooting in the description or leave me a comment. Now we'll move on to Discord settings. This part should be relatively easy. Open up Discord and click on your settings wheel. Select voice and video. For your input device, you can set it to the same microphone as you're using to record with, or if you happen to have a different one that you want people in Discord to hear, you can set it to that one as well. For the output device, this needs to be the same as a virtual audio cable as we assigned in voice meter. In the case of this tutorial, that would be just the basic cable input. Test your inputs to make sure it's good, and I recommend hopping into a call with a friend or a server to check if you can hear each other. If you did everything correctly, you should still be able to hear them, and they should still be able to hear you. Next up to Valorant. Open up Valorant. Log in, and once you're on the main menu, go over to your settings. Click on Audio, and then select Voice Chat. If you want player voice to be on the same track as Discord, set it to Cable Output VB Audio Cable. If you want your player voice to be on a separate track, set it to Cable A. Set your input device to the microphone of your choosing that you want players to hear you want. This can be whatever device you want. Now on to the OBS settings. This is the final part of the tutorial. Once this part's finished, you can create a test recording to see if all the tracks are properly split. First, we're going to right click and add a new scene. You can name it whatever you want. I name it recording because that's what this is for. The source we create by the end of this will be usable on any scene within OBS as well. So if you're recording a VOD while you stream, the tracks will still stay split. In the sources section, right click and add audio input capture. You can name this microphone. Set the device to be whichever microphone input you want to use for recording. For me, it's my Yeti Classic. Right click the source section again, add another audio input capture, and this time name it VOIP. This is the voice of in-game players. Set the device to the same devices we have VoIP set to in Voice Meter Banana. If you're merging it on the same track as Discord, this is just going to be cable output. If you're splitting it to its own track, you should set this to cable A. Right click the sources again and this time add a new audio output capture. You can name this one Discord. Set the device to cable output VB audio cable. Right click the source section one last time and add another new audio output capture. You can name this one desktop or game audio or both. Leave the device set to default and it'll automatically use your computer's default output sound device which we set earlier in the video. For clarification, your game audio will be playing on the same track as all the other non-split default audios on your device. That includes YouTube videos, Spotify music, other games, or any other application that you didn't explicitly separate from the audio tracks. In the audio mixer section, you should now see four audio monitor bars. One of them, for the desktop audio, should be lighting up along with the sound of my voice if you're listening to me through the same device. When you speak, the microphone monitor should light up. You can create a party in Valorant to test the sound of in-game players, and the VoIP monitor should line up. If you have someone talking to you in Discord, the Discord monitor should light up. I recommend testing each of these independently so that you aren't confused which monitor is lighting up and when. If two monitors light up with the exact same pattern, or if one of them that you expected isn't lighting up at all, that means there was a device assigned incorrectly or that no audio is coming through it. Finally, this last step is the most important for making all of this effort worth it. In OBS, go to your general settings and head over to the output section. Select recording tab. Ensure that you have the audio track checkboxes on to tell OBS how many tracks to record when rolling. If you split your game, microphone, and Discord audio tracks, you need to check track 1, 2, and 3. If you also split the voice of your players, you need to select track 4 as well. If you split any additional tracks, you can tell OBS to create up to 6 independent audio tracks in this menu. Click OK to continue. Left click the three dot icon under any of the audio monitors in the audio mixer section of OBS. Select Advanced Audio Properties. You should see all four of the audio inputs and outputs we created earlier and their assigned names. On the right hand side, you'll notice six checkboxes by each of the input. 
for each check mark that input will record on the respective track. At this point, we'll need to specify which tracks we want what devices to be recorded on. I have it in this order. Game audio on track 1, my voice on track 2, player voice on track 3, and Discord on track 4. That's how it'll show up in Premiere Pro as well. Make sure to have all the other checkboxes unchecked except the ones that you want to record the respective audio on, or else you'll end up with a track that has duplicate audio and a headache during editing. At this point, everything should be done. You should now have all of your audio tracks split and ready to record. Start recording and test all your audio sources independently. Once you're finished, drag and drop your video file into a software that can read multiple tracks like Adobe Premiere Pro to see the individual audio tracks and their audio peak visuals. If you just hit play on the video without bringing it into an editor, the chances are that you'll only be able to hear the very first track, track 1 from OBS, which in our case is the game audio. This is normal. Most video playback software can only play a single audio track at a time. I use VLC, which you can swap between audio tracks mid-playback to hear which one you select. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that everything went smoothly while watching this. It took me about 7 hours to figure out how to do it on my own because of my circumstances, which were much different than default but I struggled with it so that you guys didn't have to. I'll be sure to link frequently asked questions and answers in the description along with any useful information that I can think of after posting the video. Uh, more content like this, let me know if you want to see uh, anything like that and I'll try my best to make a tutorial of it if I know how to do it. And also a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated because it helps me stay motivated to put out more content like this for you guys. See ya.